in the last video we mainly discussed about they will uh, hear from you listen from you that about that phd how to go for phd how to apply different institute and all these things we get a clean explain explanation from you about that so in this in this video in this next episode i would like to get uh, some generalized question from you i like to know about your views on on these things so first of all you right now you are in three year in texas so can you say about uh, please share the experience of you yeah, outside India, and what was the it experience about that three years? Right, I'm um, uh, in my third year of PhD. It's, it's almost two and a half years through. So yeah, uh, I uh, so I got to learn about a new uh, style of teaching. New so the style of teaching, the amount of homeworks that people uh, give in uh, USA are pretty different from uh, my universities that I studied in like Rangapur or ISI. So I got to learn about uh, the education system here. And uh, so you say is a big and beautiful country. There are many places to visit. So as, and I enjoy traveling a lot. So uh, it, it, uh, it, I mean, last couple of years has been extremely great in that sense as well. I uh, got to see many uh, natural i mean natural naturally beautiful places for the matter of fact uh, i'm scheduled to travel to grand canyon next month so yeah so that's uh, that's a great aspect of uh, doing a phd in usa you get to travel a lot if you are really fond of it and you get to know about a new culture new education system so yeah uh, okay. that adds to your life experience great 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 so the point you just said that is the education system. So can you say about that? Like, what are the good things are there? Like uh, you are you are in teacher assistant for last three years. So what are the good thing you seeing here that can be applied? We can take some view, some good positive thing in our system also. What are the good thing we can implement in our education system? Right. I mean, uh, so learning is important in uh, in whatever education you take. But I think the one very important point is employability, looking at employability of your students. So if you are signing up for a course, you have some idea about whether I'd be able to get a job if I do this course. So I think uh, when the courses are designed in here, uh, that perspective is looked at from a more elaborate point of view. So uh, if you're taking say a statistics class, and you learn a lot of new methods. Here, you'd have elaborate uh, classes where you get to learn about some programming languages like R, Python, something like that. And you'd be able to uh, apply the methods that you learned about. So that adds to your employability. I mm -hmm. think that is very important. And uh, usually, People, as, uh, I mean, the teachers assign a lot of homeworks and stuff like that, which is somewhat different from the universities I studied in. But I think uh, the employability aspect of it is the most important part that I uh, observed in here. Great, great. Now that uh, you did one year of one year of PA job and three year of PhD, then and two thing yeah you are also uh, discussed in previous video also that it two thing give a two different aspect of your life and two different learning to it, it gives so what are the learning from two different things like phd and like job right when you are doing a job you have to uh, work on a very practical problem come up with quick solutions and convey your solution to stakeholders uh, that can be your manager or some other team or some some of your other teammates. So uh, you you sort of develop a set of skills that will that would come in handy going forward as well. It's uh, if you're a statistician, it's not only about looking at data and trying to analyze it. It's also about uh, how you present your work, things like that. So that's something that I learned when uh, I was doing my job. And uh, I think then in academia, again, you have to work on a project. Uh, you have to convey your uh, findings to your mentor, to your batchmates, to larger audiences in various conferences as well. So uh, yeah, so I think people talk about 
dissimilarity, dissimilarities, but there are a lot of similarities in the sense that it's not only about what you do, it's mm-hmm. about how we present the stuff uh, and uh, the whole package. So there are similarities as well. But um, in job, especially in the job I worked in, it's like get this project done within a couple of months and stuff like that. In PhD, you have you tend to get longer deadlines. You work on a project for a year or two, then try to send it to a journal for a possibility of publication. So timelines are a little bit different in PhD, but I think there are lots of similarities. Great. And and then I will ask you that you your rank was five in IIT Jam 2016, and you also cleared the rise and you finally did the ISI from uh, from ISI. So does give some tips to students who are applying for Jam and who want to go for instead. So give some tips for them. Right, these questions are extremely year specific. So uh, the format of the exams change every year, almost every year. Uh, the type of questions might change a bit as well. So again, look for a senior which has, who has taken the exam maybe a year or two earlier. Try to get hold of some question papers and practice. You may be uh, very good at a topic, but still not do very well in IIT Jam. Again, you have to solve certain number of questions within a short stipulated time frame. So again, practice is the name of the game. Uh, get hold of question papers and practice a lot. For ISI, again, you can uh, look for previous year question papers. So there is this test of mathematics book, which is more applicable for BSTEP, but that book can come in handy for MSTEP exams as well. So yeah, uh, you may know the topic, but look for the question papers and practice, uh, practice as much as you can. Right, and one thing, one thing I would like to add that what, I say to my junior that when I was in Narendra Pura's mission and we are all in same hostels. So that group study, that group study that in some problem I am in stuck, so I go to you, I went to you for solution and that get group study is also helpful for us also. Right. I mean, if you, if, 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 if you're not comfortable in a particular chapter or something like that, it's yes. always a good idea to spend some time with a friend and try to learn it together. Because um, the professors would only uh, provide you with so much amount of time that there, uh, but you can spend maybe a couple of hours, three hours, four hours with a with a friend trying to learn about the new topic that you are not very comfortable with. And sometimes the person who is teaching you get to learn a lot as well. So it's a two way business. Right. So yeah. And then uh, in that point, I would like to thank you that for that BSc days and you helped me a lot. And I think that the help I got from you, that short breaks, that help, that helped me a lot to get IIT Jam. No, I mean, I must, I must uh, talk about Shubhajit. He was uh, extremely uh, diligent in his preparations for IIT Jam. And uh, I was extremely happy when he got a good rank and was able to uh, go to IIT Kanpur. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> one thing and one also I will mention that in BSC days, I saw that you played every day. So can you say about that? How playing, how sports helped you? How sports came, helped you keep motivated? How sports helped you to study? Again, it depends on the person. So I used to go to playgrounds in my childhood as well, all through my boyhood. That didn't change during a uh, uh, during my BSc days. Now I do not get as much time, but I try to play once every week. But again, I mean, if you, if, if you uh, want to do music or if you want to play or if you want to chit chat with your friends or if you want to exercise, whatever that is, that can help to uh, alleviate the pressures that you have of studies and uh, divert your mind for a little bit. And that in turn helps your studies when you actually get to study. So yeah, pursue your hobbies. Uh, I think yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. Uh, then uh, then uh, in in your long journey, in a long career and long career, you I, I that must that you have 
faced some struggle, you have faced some difficulties. So how would you tackle them? How you tackle them? What is your motivation? Right. I mean, all of us face challenges on the way. Uh, it's extremely important to keep a calm, calm mind and try to see whether uh, how to get rid of this problem. Again, bank on people, talk to friends, talk to your mentors, talk to some of your professors, talk to your seniors. They might come up, come with good help and advice. At the same time, everyone's problem is very personalized. So you have to put in the thought as well. So some combination of your thought and uh, help from your professors and friends. So that's, that's the way it is. I mean, it sounds extremely easy, but it's ex extremely difficult to do. Mm. But yeah, when you do need help, go and ask for help. That help goes a long way. And look to help people as well. So yeah. Right, right, right. So one one final question for you that uh, let's assume let's assume you have the power to change the Indian education system. You have the power to create an education system. What will you do? Right. I mean, from right, I can try to make a dreamy picture and put my personal biases in answering this question. But I think the most practical answer would be to. Uh, look at how to improve the employability uh, of the particular course I worked in. There is an extremely nice TEDx talk by uh, ex-union minister Shoshi Tharoor on Indian education system, where uh, he talks about various stages and problems and possible solutions of uh, the education system that we have in place. So uh, I'd send the link to Shubhajit and try and ask him to attach that link. I think he summarizes uh, the problems of our, of our education system pretty well. Uh, uh, one word summary, improve employability of the various courses that we have. Great, great, great. So one final tip for all students who are listening to us. Right, keep, uh, keep a good balance. You have to have some thoughts to start off with, whether you are going for a job or a PhD. You should have some idea about what you are trying to do, but keep a open keep an open mind. Be flexible. Look at people around you. As I said earlier, I mean, if you do not get your dream job or do not get to work in the industry that you work, that you intended to work in, or you do not get a good PhD in your first attempt, that's not the end of the world. You were most likely in your early twenty three or twenty four. Uh, fourth year of life so there is long time to go uh, keep running so and and it enjoy as things come I mean uh, so yeah that's that's pretty simple uh, one failure is not the end of the story thank you thank you very very well and I think this will be very helpful for the student who like to go for PhD or in, edu in any education field that is really helpful for them also okay so thanks a lot thanks a lot for your time for getting us time from your busy schedule and from a uh, us you are you are giving us time but thanks a lot for that thank you gotta get a good session thanks a lot and, and, and I, I, I i enjoyed quite a bit talking to you for this long it's a bit weird that we are uh, conversing in english uh, which is not our mother tongue i think this is by far the most we have talked in english um, it wouldn't be anywhere close if i compare it to uh, the times he spent in Rwandapur, Brahman and the hostel. Right, right. So uh, thanks again and uh, the best luck for your future, for your postdoc, for your PhD. Thanks a lot and good luck. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity as well. Bye. Bye, bye.